रिस्पेक्टेड गेस्ट एक्सलेंसी अम्बेसडर फ्राम मंगोलिया एंड डिप्टी चीफ ऑफ मोशन ऑफ तर्किस्तान मिस्टर अग्रवाल प्रोफेसर अग्रवाल एंड ऑल्सो वाइस चेयरमैन प्रोफेसर अग्रवाल माई इंडियर स्टूडेंट्स इट्स इंडीड ए ग्रेट प्लेजर एंड ऑनर फॉर मी टू सॉर्ट ऑफ शेयर माई थाट्स एंड आइडियाज ऑन ए वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक टू बी फेयर एंड आप आई एम नॉट ए स्कॉलर ऑन सेंट्रल एशिया आई हैव टू प्रिपेयर फॉर सेंट्रल एशिया एंड आई एम एवर दैट आई एम आई एम इन फ्रंट ऑफ वेरी इनफॉर्म स्कॉलर्स एटलीस्ट द Uh, the diplomats are there the students are there but i made a sort of special efforts to study the region and india stake there and uh, i have with me also another colleague uh, mr uh, from pti mr bhuya he will also speak so i won't take much time uh i really appreciate that you know it's a very thoughtful topic that the uh, institution decided that we must discuss and deliberate on a very important topic normally when we discuss foreign policy we discuss about indo india us relations india russia relations or india's active policy look east policy those kind of but very seldom we discuss about central asia very important region a uh, very important region uh i think many of you may not be also knowing if i will ask you what is the capital of kazakhstan i think that very few people will be able to tell similarly if i ask you what is the capital of kyrgyzstan maybe you are not be able to tell anyway before i discuss about the topic how you know these these five countries namely kazakhstan kyrgyzstan uzbekistan tajikistan and turkmenistan they are younger nations you remember when soviet union got disintegrated that was in 1991 after gorbachev's policy of perestroika you remember perestroika glasnost you know, those kind of things you may recall them so then soviet union was sort of there was implosion you can say you call it disintegration or implosion whatever you may call you what am you choose but anyway these countries emerged out of that disintegration so these countries are relatively young so what then you know there is something this concept called you know i will call it punks of transition they transited from one regime soviet regime to a new system of governance so that is why you know there is a political scientist called samuel p huntington of harvard university he has coined the term political order in changing societies once the nations were born how do they cope up with new realities new dynamics so that was the challenge so how to institution building in those countries how to ensure stability and stability is required all the more because of development so that was the big challenge for these countries soviet regime ended and now you know and you know these countries are bordering great powers russia china pakistan of course is not a i mean i mean that is not that powerful a country but china and russia are the two powerful neighbors and of course the influence of us is always there so so they have to strike a balance between these two great powers and the superpower usa and where where does india stands there india we have our policy in case of central asia we call it extended neighborhood we have the fast neighborhood policy active policy now it is equally important our extended neighborhood policy is equally important very important now before i speak on these uh, countries and india's relationship with these countries let me briefly also speak about their present day you know economic position the demographic profile they are important to know how india best can engage with those countries now their gdp of the central asian countries taken together is 0.3 and they occupy i think about 1.1% of the population of the world population but the important fact is that the demography is mostly the average age of the central asian population is 28 point something so we have a younger generation population there in central asian country that is very important to understand the region and india's engagement with these countries and most of these younger generation people they didn't live under the soviet regime 
so they are used to a different kind of a political culture new i mean they are not used to russian regime so different kind of culture and being since we are all students of business here and being younger you know they have aspirations like you know for example when you talk about of course we will discuss later about india china as what are the opportunities and challenges for uh, india in south uh, asian countries being you know india is has emerged one of the leading exporter of the smartphones and now they when, when you have younger generation to population in these countries perhaps one item perhaps could be how best we can export you know these smartphones to the do these centers and countries automobile you know there is a demand for that but then because of distance that's not possible the chinese cars and other cars or russian cars will be available there but one to me as a layman i understand perhaps you know this kind of you know smartphones can be one of export item of course we'll discuss in green greater length later india as rightly pointed out in the opening remark we had a historical uh, cultural link with the region the old silk route is there and uh, as rightly pointed out uh, you know many rulers from these uh, regions they came uh, to rule over india so there is a connect historic connect and cultural link with the entire countries and moreover you know another challenge in the region is that ethnic divide ethnic divide that is there and of course you know i'm happy to say that unlike many parts of the country central asian countries have been able to hold together hold together and in spite of you know this kind of a what we call um, ethnic divide by and large there have been some aberration here and there but by and large they have been able to maintain the unity and integrity of the territorial unity and integrity of the countries as a whole and there is unity among all the five central asian countries that's the important aspect and one thing here i would like to also mention you know these countries collectively they have adopted nuclear free zone they have adopted that is very important you know since you know many of the some of the countries in central asia they had uh, nuclear reactors and they were under the influence of new so you know one important step taken by collectively by these countries is to declare south south asian nuclear free zone that is very important step and the caspian sea is also there tremendous oil reserve caspian sea energy caspian sea is there so you know these things you need to keep in mind while discussing india's engagement with uh, the central asian countries our policy as i said earlier extended neighborhood policy now how best india can engage or we go for a mutually mutually beneficial relation with these countries that's a big challenge first of all you know there are big players china is a big player it is it continues it is still a big player and of course fair enough there is strategic rivalry between india and china in central asia elsewhere and also in central asia and in terms of resources what china can afford perhaps we cannot afford india cannot afford but we have the soft power of democracy that is one advantage and since these countries they are in the process of establishing institutions like democratic institutions that's one area where i mean india's expertise can be thoughtfully utilized how it can be utilized i i feel one program of government of india's flagship program is called itech indian technical and economic cooperation program maybe i think there is already india is offering a lot of itech slots to uh, students and uh, officers from some of the central asian they can be you know they can be offered this itech slots get training in india's technical institutions they are of course getting in various areas like agriculture it in, in different including you know they we have a institute called you know bureau of parliamentary strategy and training so their parliamentary officers legislators they come regularly to know about how india manages its democratic institution so itech is a flagship program which can be utilized to promote greater india india's engagement with the countries of the uh, 
the South Asian countries. That is one area. And I feel what, there is not much of you know, air connectivity between the two countries. And as the, the, the visual shown here indicated how rich Central Asia is in terms of tourism. Maybe, you know, Indian tourists, Indians are very fond of tourism. They like visiting places. But without proper connectivity, it's difficult. So connectivity, air connectivity needs to be developed. How this is possible? No, no airlines will go for starting any, I mean, the route without being sure of the profitability. And that is possible if there is a greater awareness about the tourism potential. So I feel maybe, you know, like some Indian films can be shot in, in, in many of the countries, good local locals in Central Asia. That will give some exposure when they see the movie. They will come to know about many important places in, in Central Asia. That's one way. Then I also suggest maybe to create awareness, Indian Council of Cultural Relations can establish a chair, chair professor in some of the university in, in, in the Central Asian countries. That is one way. ICCR also can organize cultural programs, inviting you know, the, the cultural troops from Central Asian and then have a program here. Similarly, Indian programs can be organized. Of course, we have a Vivekananda Center in one of the Central Asian countries. So more such centers, cultural, Indian cultural centers can be opened in those parts of the, uh, in those parts of the region. So that way, there will be greater awareness about that. And so far as, you know, I don't want to comment on, uh, you know, this rivalry, strategic rivalry between uh, India and China in these regions. Recently, you know, uh, China, Chinese uh, president uh, invited immediately after the pandemics, President Xi Jinping invited all the leaders of the Central Asian Republic to Xi'an in, in China. And they had, he had promised to offer 3 billion US dollar. And we have offered only one third of it, one uh, one uh, thousand billion dollar. Much of, uh, support has been uh, promised to the countries of the South Asian. That is, I mean, in terms of whatever, you know, in terms of our income is much less than what is China's. So, but still, it is quite a good. Moreover, there is you know, one thing I would like to point I, I have no intention to uh, offending any, anybody's sentiment. But our developmental assistance, to be fair enough, is more humanitarian, it is development oriented, it is not like, you know, not, not like the program of BRI and what is happening in Sri Lanka, what is happening maybe in Bangladesh or what may happen tomorrow in Maldives, it's anybody's guess. But what we India did in Sri Lanka, in other places, it's development oriented. I am reminded of an African uh, saying, if you give a fish to a man, he eats for a day, but if you teach him how to fish, then he earns a livelihood. So that is the basic difference of India's development approach and that of the China's development approach. But I mean, it's a, it's a global world. Everybody is free for everybody is to compete. So the two great powers, India and China, they are competing in the region. India's advantage is, you know, democracy. And China has more resources. That is fair enough. And uh, I would not like to say much. I wish there should be some kind of a more cooperation, collaboration between India and uh, countries of the uh, South Asian countries. And I have already told one useful tool is the ITEC program. Indian government can consider offering more ITEC slots, scholarship to the students from uh, Central Asian countries. They can come and study here. And similarly, tourism, India, more Indian tourists should visit those countries and that tourism can be promoted if there is, you know, uh, like as I suggested, maybe Indian films are shot in, in South Asia, uh, Central Asian countries and then there is some cultural programs are organized by in Indian Council of Cultural Relations and some Indian chairs are established in, in universities, they are in um, Central Asian countries. So that will promote people's to people's contact and greater awareness about the people and the two countries. I have another distinguished colleague, uh, Mr. Bhuya, he will also speak. And I will be, I think students will be eagerly also look forward to hear from Ambassador of Mongolia and Deputy Chief of the Kazakhstan. he will also share. I think if I have, 
I mean, he can, if he has, he can perhaps supplement what we discussed here, and I look forward, I would look forward to hear them also. Thank you very much.